This is Radio Kerry. Oh, interesting developments on the whole COVID-19 front. Uh, Retail Excellence Ireland is calling on all grocery stores with multiple departments to close the textile, clothing and homeware areas of their stores. There are probably people in those sections browsing, walking around, basically killing time because people are cracking up and they're doing anything to get out of the house and anything to distract themselves at the moment. Now, my next guest should be back home in Massachusetts by now. Uh, she came here to Ireland and was travelling around Ireland exploring the kingdom and experiencing some of the best of our hospitality and recording interviews here but when she was due to go home of course the whole COVID-19 thing struck and now she finds that uh, she's going to be here for quite a number of weeks yet and she doesn't mind one bit her name is Stephanie Abrams and Stephanie by the way has millions and I'm not exaggerating millions of followers in the USA and uh, she's a radio journalist she's a TV journalist she does online stuff and she absolutely adores Ireland and he has done phenomenal work in terms of promoting everything that Ireland has to offer and she's on the line now good afternoon Stephanie Oh, it is so grand to hear your voice, voice dear, dear drum. It's <laughs> a, a year now. And Stephanie, tell us about your your recent trip to Kerry, and I believe you got great hospitality here before all of this happened. Oh my gosh, I bet if I was still in Kerry, I'd still be getting great hospitality. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we had, um, well, we actually arrived in Ireland on February 28th with the anticipation of going back March 18th. And then on March 15th, we learned our flight had been cancelled and every subsequent flight had been cancelled. Happily, I don't have little kids or elderly parents that I have to worry about on the other side of the ocean, so things are a little less stressful than they could be. And you know, I'm so glad when you introduced me, Deirdre, that you didn't use the word exiled or isolated or stranded or whatever, because I don't feel any of those. And if you're going to be, quote-unquote, stuck in a place, this is the place to get stuck. And, and, Steph- and so, sorry, yes, go on. Up here. And Stephanie, do you have any idea? I know your husband Mark is with you. Do you have any idea at this stage when you might get to go back home to Massachusetts? I don't know. So far, they've canceled every flight. And if Aer Lingus says they're flying, I think we're probably going to be on the plane. And I'm concerned about that because there could be some risk associated with that. So I'm hoping they're all sensible enough to, you know, not fly us into something that. Right now, we're doing, we're cooking on all four burgers, literally. <laughs> great stuff. Well, listen, it sounds like you're having a great time. I'm glad that you love the Irish food and that you're being given the best of hospitality here, albeit an extended trip that you didn't quite plan for that. And, and watch for my next travel guide, A Thousand and One Reasons to Visit Ireland. Oh, very good. Well, listen, it was great talking to you again, Stephanie, and uh, uh, enjoy your, your extended stay here, and we, we'll chat to you again, no doubt. I hope so. Keep in touch. And when I get home, you have to come on the air with me. <laughs> we will. I'll return the compliment. All the best, <laughs> Stephanie. Take care. Bye-bye. Now we've hung up the gloves. Well, it was grand visiting in County Antrim, Northern Ireland, while we talked with Deirdre Walsh in County Kerry. But now let's meet with Mark Leslie. Uh, you'll probably be amused at my rather amateurish first attempt with a fly cam. Uh, but it was brought on by the fact that uh, it, the day before the big lockdown in Ireland, uh, we had rumour that we were going to be banned from possibly even leaving our houses. And as a daily communicant with the sea, I thought, well, I'll visit my favourite bathing spot, the uh, beautiful Scotsman's Bay with the James Joyce's Tower, which is, features in the opening page of Ulysses, the big Napoleonic gun battery, a large seal colony, and the famous gentleman's only bathing place. So we start in my beautiful seafront house. Uh, Dunleary is the first railway commuter suburb in the world. In 1834, they built a railway line out to it just so people could live by the sea. My son Luke is giving me rather nervous instructions on how to control the fly cam. Uh, So he insists I fly it round the house a bit just to make sure that I'm not gonna lose it at sea, but finally lets me go outside and, and take it out through the window. Uh, and fly it across Scotsman's Bay 
uh, towards uh, the Sandy Cove. This part of the coast is known as the Dublin Riv uh, Riviera. I think we have the movie Hollywood Star who stars in Caucasian lockdown trapped here and actually having quite a nice time. But from the 40 foot bathing place, I'd always every morning watch the lobster fishermen going and laying their pots. And I never really understood the technique. So I thought, here's a sneaky opportunity to fly out and um, uh, observe them at close hand. And with the seagulls and the noise of the engine, they were blissfully unaware of my fly cam uh, tailing them. They were just focused on all the money they're gonna get when uh, the lobsters that they bring up uh, get flown direct to expensive restaurants in Paris the next day. I was quite intrigued that all of the lobster pots get left down on one long rope, uh, let out in quite a, to me, a rather alarming technique where if the rope got caught around one of those uh, fishermen's boots, he'd be dragged to the bottom of the sea and the lobsters would have the last laugh, I think. Um, but I could see why it'd be a very agreeable uh, lifestyle because they tend to drop and collect the pots um, at dawn uh, with wonderful views across to Dorky Island, which is the place uh, in Ireland where we have the oldest evidence of humans living. The Vikings used it as an entrepot for storing slaves because most people couldn't swim. And their highest victim hostage was the Bishop of uh, Dublin, could swim and actually swam from the island to his freedom. Uh, it's also the largest seal colony in uh, uh, that part of the coast. We have 50 seals who got quite tame. Now on the way back, I was delighted to see a load of my friends, all including all sorts of literati, famous writers and celebrities who live in the Dorky Riviera, having what proved to be their last morning swim, because the day after this, they locked the bathing place down uh, because of its potential as people being too close together and uh, it being a hot spot for uh, spreading the virus. So it's a slightly historic moment, even two months later or whatever, uh, the bathing place is still closed. We all swim, of course, in the sea and swim around it. So it's a slightly pointless ban, you know, just off territorial waters. But here they all are enjoying their swim. And um, uh, obviously there's a 20 minute battery power. So Luke was rather anxiously saying, bring it back, dad, bring it back. Uh, you know, we don't want it to run out of uh, electric power over the middle of the sea. But actually we made it uh, home uh, in, in no time at all. And um, for readers of James Joyce, where we were, he poetically describes swimming in the snot greasy at the 40 foot. But anyway, uh, we bring her safely home. And my son, Luke, again, is a bit unsure about my ability to land it back on the kitchen table. Uh, so he's giving me instructions. He doesn't want me to land in the porridge or the cornflakes. I get it down in one piece. I think both are surprise and relief. Uh, anyway. Uh, that was a bit of fun, a bit of nonsense. Uh, uh, it's it, it fired me with ambition to use the drone a lot more uh, once the restrictions are lifted. But at the moment, like yourself, um, uh, Abe, uh, Stephanie, um, you're unexpected guests in our country for, for, for who knows how long. So I hope you're finding ways of entertaining yourself and being productive. So God bless and um, Talk to you again soon, maybe. Thanks for joining us, Mark. I'm going back into our beautiful garden to listen to all the birds sing. Come back again, people. Gotta fly now. <laughs>